So good morning and welcome back to in Pitel lecture series on classics in total synthesis. So today uh, we will talk about a natural product uh, which is uh, uh, highly substituted androquinone as a core structure. So that natural product is called vineomycinone B2 methyl ester. Actually these vineomycines uh, have this common this dihydroxy androquinone as the core structure. So there are quite a few vineomycines but today what we are going to do is we are going to talk about a couple of total synthesis of this vineomycinone methyl esters. You can see this is uh, this is a methyl ester so that is why it is called uh, vineomycinone methyl ester. So all the vineomycines show exceptional activity against gram positive bacteria and also against some tumors in mice. The two synthesis which we are going to talk about today are from Danishevsky's group and Tyas group. Danishevsky synthesis used a very interesting heterodial salt reaction to construct this uh, dihydropyrin ring and they also used a Claisen rearrangement to introduce the side chain on the right hand side. In addition, they also used a deal salt reaction to construct the androquinone moiety. Let us see how Danishevsky's group used these key reactions to complete the total synthesis of vineomycinin B2 methyl ester. First, let us look at the electrosynthesis. So, they made this vineomycinin methyl ester from this methyl ketone using a Reformatsky type reaction. So, you one can easily see this CH2COTME group can be added to this methyl ketone via Reformatsky reaction. And this methyl ketone, if you look at carefully, on the left hand side, that is this dihydropyrin. Okay. So, this was converted into the dihydroxyl group here using hydroboration. Okay, hydroboration oxidation. Already there is a enol TMS, one more hydroxyl group was introduced using hydroboration oxidation. And as I mentioned, this particular dihydropyrin unit was made through heterodial salt reaction. Okay, you start with that aldehyde and then you do a deal salt reaction with uh, Danishevsky's diene, you get corresponding dihydropyrin. Okay. And this aldehyde can be obtained from this allyl group by isomerization of this double bond. Okay. Once you isomerize the double bond, it goes to the internal alkene, which upon ozonolysis will give corresponding aldehyde. And if you look at this compound, you can see here this also upon Claisen rearrangement followed by ozonolysis, you can get this methyl ketone. Okay. These are three, four steps involved in this reaction in this particular transformation and this can be obtained again. So, this is the diene. Okay, this is the diene and this substituted naphthaquinone is the dienophile. They can undergo an intermolecular diel sol reaction and followed by aromatization to give this substituted anthroquinone. Okay, and that can be obtained from commercially available natural product called Juglone. Okay. Now, let us see how the forward synthesis took place. So, he started with uh, again commercially available methyl crotonate. Now, if you treat with LDA, if you treat with LDA what will happen? This CH2, this will be picked up. LDA will pick up this proton and it can generate anion here and that place one can quench with allyl bromide. Okay. So, it picks up the gamma proton and then quenching with all allyl bromide at alpha position. So, that will give this alpha, beta, gamma. So, beta, gamma unsaturated ester. This ester as you can see this proton is still acidic isn't it? So, you can generate anion 
and quench with TMS chloride. So that will give you the corresponding starting diene which is required for diel sol reaction with juglone. Okay? So once this is made, then the juglone which is required for the diel sol reaction was deprotonated, that phenolic hydroxyl group was deprotonated and quenched with this allyl iodide to get the precursor not only for the diel sol reaction, which is as you can see this is the quinone moiety which can undergo diel sol reaction and here this allyl ether which can undergo the intramolecular Claisen reaction. The other starting material that is Tanishep cis diene was prepared from this enone using LDA and TMS chloride. Now let us see how the diel sol reaction worked. So first he started with this diene which was prepared from methyl crotonate and diel sol reaction with 2,5-dichlorobenzoquinone. 2,5-dichlorobenzoquinone gave this intermediate. Of course, this is unstable, so it was not isolated. It underwent elimination of uh, HCl, also methanol, to give this hydroxy naphthoquinone. Okay. Then the free hydroxyl was methylated. Okay, the free hydroxyl was methylated followed by isomerization of the double bond. That allyl group was isomerized using Wilkinson catalyst. Then the next diel sol reaction was done on this chloro naphthoquinone. Okay, so that gave this intermediate which was subsequently aromatized to give this compound. Okay, now you can see here you have the double bond which can be ozonalized to get aldehyde and here also you can get this keto. Okay. So this is one way they prepared the key androquinone. They also used another method to prepare the same intermediate where they started from juglone which I already mentioned and they allylated with this allyl bromide, substituted allyl bromide. Then diel sol reaction with this diene followed by aromatization, he could get this compound. Now, you methylate this phenolic hydroxyl group and what you need is to isomerize the double bond to internal alkene. So that was done again with rhodium chloride. You can isolate the double bond, so you can isomerize the double bond and then when you heat it at 200 degrees, then the Claisen rearrangement takes place, so that migrates the allyl group to ortho position. Then you can methylate this free phenolic hydroxyl group as well and followed by ozonolysis you get this side ketone, this upon ozonolysis you will get ketone and then this side you will get aldehyde. Okay, this is the highly substituted androcuron moiety which is the core unit of eneomycinone P2. So what needs to be done is one has to do a heterodiel sol reaction on the aldehyde on the left hand side and then one has to add the CH2COTME through Reformatsky type reaction. Okay. So he carried out uh, the heterodiel sol reaction with this diene followed by you know isolation. Uh, when he did the diel sol reaction with this diene, you could get this uh, dihydrofuran, which upon hydroboration, okay, which upon hydroboration followed by oxidation with hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide, you can see the required diol was obtained. Okay. So now the diol is there. Next is to carry out the corresponding Grignard reagent. So the Grignard reagent did not work. Actually, the original plan was to carry out Reformatsky reaction. So here uh, he tried this uh, the alpha bromo methyl acetate and formed the Grignard and this reaction did not go. So instead, so what he did, so they removed both methoxy group. Okay, they removed both methoxy group with PBR3. With BBR3, both methoxy were removed. Then from methyl acetate, 
this proton was deprotonated using lithium hexamethyl disulfide that lithium derivative was added to the keto okay and of course to facilitate that magnesium bromide diethyl ether also was added so now this reaction worked very well and that was converted into uh, the corresponding vinium as you know b2 methyl ester after removing the tms okay so that's how this total synthesis was accomplished and it started from commercially available natural product called juglone and it involved heterodiol sol reaction normal diol sol reaction claisen rearrangement as key reactions to synthesize this compound overall he took about 11 longest linear steps uh, with a yield of 9% okay so 9% overall yield is uh, a very good strategy and now let us see the second total synthesis which is chiral one and this was reported by marcus tyas so he the left hand side glycol part he started from d glucol okay so d glucol was the you know key starting material to introduce the chiral center okay and according to him it and uh, this vinium is you know can be easily disconnected into three fragments so this is one fragment and then middle the dihydroxy androquinone is the second fragment and the third fragment comes from this intermediate okay these are the three fragments you could easily disconnect very logical now let us see how he made these three fragments and then combined all he started with beta hydroxy carboxylic acid this upon treatment with pyvaldehyde the presence of acid it gave this protected compound okay now he wanted to introduce a double bond here so that was done uh, first uh, bromination followed by elimination he got the double bond and still the you can see there is one stereo center then the allylic bromination was carried out with nbs under photochemical condition so one side chain is already prepared the second side chain he started with diglucol okay the triacetate was hydrolyzed to get the triol then the primary alcohol was mesylated then both the secondary alcohols were acetylated okay the mesylate upon treatment with lithium iodide the mesylate is converted into the corresponding iodide now upon treatment with lih so this iodide will be displaced by hydride and ester also will be reductively removed so you basically what you have done is from the d glucol the ch2oh is converted into ch3 okay and both the hydroxyl groups were protected as tbs ethers then treatment with butyl lithium uh, tertiary butyl lithium one can generate and on here then that was exchanged with zinc for the magnesium type coupling okay then for the middle portion this is a commercially available dihydroxy androquinone take this and protect both hydroxyl groups as mom ether okay then reduce this two ketones reduce these two ketones with sodium borohydrate isopropanol completely to get the corresponding aromatic one okay from androquinone that is dihydroxy androquinone what we have done is dihydroxy protected anthracene okay so then it's a symmetrical compound so a treatment with tertiary butyl lithium either it can generate here or here does not matter both are same then exchange it with tributyl tin chloride okay so then you exchange that with iodine okay the tributyl tin can be easily exchanged with iodine by treatment with iodine so this side you have iodine and that side you have zinc so then do the key legacy coupling to get or introduce the c c c bond okay then this sodium cyanoborohydride will reduce this enol ether okay so the sodium cyanoborohydride will reduce the enol ether stereoselectively to get exact 
tetrahedro pyrene unit with all stereo centers fixed. Now what is left? As you know, you have to introduce a tin group here and then attach the CH2 side chain. Okay. So first introduce the tin by treating with n-butyl lithium and then tri quenching with tributyl tin chloride and this upon coupling again this time it is like uh, still a coupling so that gives the corresponding side right hand side side chain okay so if you look at this what is missing is a methyl group at this carbon but you have enone so one can easily introduce a methyl group using gilbert's reagent so that's what he did and that methyl 14 addition took place highly stereoselectively because of the presence of the tertiary butyl group. Okay? Then what needs to be done? If you look at this middle ring of this anthracene, in the natural product it is anthroquinone. That means this diene should be oxidized to diketone. So that was done uh, to get the corresponding di substituted androquinone okay so what is left you have to remove this tertiary butyl group you have to remove both moms and you have to remove both tbs group so if you treat with hcl so this will remove and then you also will get methyl ester mom group will go and also tbs group will go so it's a complete global deprotection followed by esterification all were done in one step to complete the asymmetric total synthesis of vinyomycinone B2. So in summary Marcus Tyus and his co-workers completed the total synthesis of vinyomycinone B2 in early 90s and they started with the commercially available 1,8-dihydroxy androquinone and also D-glucol on the left side and the other side they started with beta-hydroxy carboxylic acid which is also commercially available. Okay. There are two key reactions which they used. One, Negishi coupling on the left hand side and still a coupling on the right hand side. And the last to introduce a chiral center on the right hand side side chain, they used Gilman reagent to introduce the quaternary center. Okay. So they took about 11 steps and overall yield was 4.6%. Considering the complexity of the molecule and also the first asymmetric total synthesis, this is a significant achievement. Okay. So I will stop here and then we will continue our discussion with one more natural product and complete the syllabus of this particular course. So we will discuss tomorrow about the total synthesis of another complex natural product called zaragozic acid okay until then see you thank you bye